You've heard this claim, haven't you? People say that when they're scared, things happen in slow motion. When fear turns on, the world slows down. It's been suggested that when we experience terror, a rush of adrenaline speeds up our brain, making the scene around us seem slower. Neuroscientist David Eagleman has just completed testing this strange phenomenon, and he joins me now to set the story straight. So, David, first of all, let's just get the quick answer. Do things actually seem to move more slowly when we're terrified? No, it's a retrospective trick of memory. Wow, okay. I, but, you know, I want to get into that, but the way I want to is, how can you possibly test this when you can't really get into people's minds? Well, we wanted to see what happens when people are really scared and time seems to go into slow motion. So we looked for ways to do that. I took my entire lab to the amusement park and we went on roller coasters. None of that was scary enough. And we finally landed on a way to test this. It's something called SCAD diving, suspended catch air device okay, diving. What is that? Tell me about that. You fall from a 150 foot tall tower into a net below. So it's three seconds of pure free fall and you're falling backwards and you land in a net going 70 miles an hour. And it's absolutely terrifying. And so it turns out this was scary enough that people experienced the time distortion and we were able to do a three second test during their fall. So they said the time distortion was they felt that uh, it was lasting very long for them? That's right. So we had people make retrospective estimates with a stopwatch. They would watch somebody else fall and make an estimate of how long it took. Then after their own fall, they would make an estimate of how long it took. And what we found is that, indeed, people believed that it lasted much longer when they were the ones who were falling, when they were remembering their own experience. But then you said you also tested what was really going on. Exactly. That's the heart of the experiment. What we wanted to know is, can people see in slow motion during the event itself? So we invented a device called the perceptual chronometer, which essentially flashes information at you very quickly. We can measure very sensitively how fast people's brains can process information, and we can test during the fall whether their brain is seeing the world in slow motion or not. If they are seeing in slow motion, they would have no problem seeing what's on the screen. If they can't see any faster than normal, then they're unable to read the information on the screen. And it turned out they weren't any different than normal? Precisely right. So it turns out they were not able to actually see the world in slow motion during the event even though retrospectively they thought that it lasted much longer. Yeah, so when they're, when they're sort of estimating it afterwards, they're wrong. Exactly. It seems like a paradox that, it could, that an event could seem to last so long and yet you don't get any increased temporal resolution. Uh, it turns out that the trick is when you're in a very fearful situation, your brain lays down memories differently. So a part of your brain called the amygdala kicks into gear and lays down memories essentially on a secondary memory track. So when you're reading those memories back out, it seems like everything must have taken much longer. So you say it's like a second memory track, so does it play back at a different rate than normal memory would? It's not that it plays back at a different rate, it's just that memories are laid down more richly and densely. So upon reading it back out, it seems like there's so much more there. Wow, that's a, now, now, can you, uh, can you have some sort of theory as to why that should be the case? Why would we do that? It turns out that what's really important for the brain is to lay down rich memories when something salient is happening, when there's a very important frightening event. That's when your brain wants to lay down the most rich memories so that it can later read those out and figure out what happened there and use that for future planning. Does it have to be restricted to fearful events? Uh, it's it's most, in this case, it's restricted to fearful events. But the general story is that any time you have richer memories, things seem to have lasted longer. So, for example, people often report that time seems to speed up as they grow older. And the reason is, when you're a child, everything is new and you're laying down very rich memories. And when you're older, you've seen it all before and your brain doesn't need to spend as much energy laying down memories. And so you have very sparse memories. And that's why at the end of a summertime, if you're a child, it seems like it lasted a long time. And for an adult, it doesn't. Well, that's a very cool experiment. Thanks a lot for telling us about it, David. Thank you, Jay. David Eagleman is an assistant professor in the Department of Neuroscience at the Baylor College of Medicine. Joined us today from Houston, Texas.